Hey, Xbyte Coding here. We're going to be making a timed random math game in C Sharp Visual Studio. So, I'm in Visual Studio. I made an I clicked the new project button and I clicked on Visual C Sharp and then Windows Form Application. Let's call this YouTube Math Timed Game. So let it Oh, that was fast. Okay. So, now what we're going to do is I'm going to resize this window. I'm going to put in a button right here. And make it bigger. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to change the text to done. This is the button the person will press when they've typed in their answer. And it'll check if it's correct. So we're going to come down here. And we're going to also change the name to done button. Okay, and then we're going to copy and paste this button, and on this one, we're going to name it the, oh, well, we're going to go up to the text, and this is going to be the start button, and change the name to start button. So, by default, this button is going to be disabled, so click on this button. And we're going to come down to, so just go to the enabled property, which is right here. Set that to false. So now when we start the program, by default, this is disabled. You have to click start. This will become enabled once you click the start. And this start button will then become disabled. So now, we are going to add a text box right over here. And this is going to be the answer box. So we're going to come down to name, type in answer box. This is where the user will type in their answer. We're going to get two label, three labels actually. One, actually we're going to need more than that. One label. We're going to call this one A label. And then we're going to call this one B label and um, set the text to zero for now on both of them and I'm gonna put this here and then this one here and in the middle we want another label right here and this is just gonna be called plus label and we're gonna come down to the name of uh, the name should be plus label the text should be just the plus sign like that and select all of them and then go into the font well I'm gonna do this because personal preference I'm just gonna make it bigger to like 16 I can do both of them at the same time like that so a label B label plus sign these will change to whatever the random number gives us so don't worry about that and now we're gonna need a timer we'll put this one over here I'm gonna make it bigger than the rest of them. I'm gonna make it 18 and this is gonna be called set the set it to set the text to zero but we're gonna call it timer label so we're done with the visual part of the program I believe so What's going to happen is I'm going to click start. This will become enabled. And then the, this will become a random number and this will become a random number. And once we type in the correct answer, if we click done before the timer runs out, we'll get a message saying, congratulations, you won. I'm kidding. It'll say you got the answer right. And you can play again. So, yeah, let's get into the coding. So let's start with the start button. Actually, we need to add in a uh, timer. So type in timer in the toolbox and drag it in. So there we have a timer. And you can just keep it called timer one. So I'm going to double click the start button. And so when I click start, the code in here in this method will run. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up here right under the uh, declaration of the class. We're going to make a variable we're going to declare a variable called well it's going to be an int called time left and 
what we're going to do is when we click the button, we're going to set time left to however many seconds the user should get. So I'm going to say five seconds. Actually, let's make it more challenging. Three seconds. So that's what this variable is going to equal to. And what we're going to do is we're going to put random r equals new random. So this r is now a new random object from the random class. And in this class, you can generate random numbers by using r.next. This returns an int. So what we're going to do is int a equals r dot next. So a is now a random number, but you can put the max in here. I'm going to set the max to 12 and copy this. And then b is also going to be a random number with a max of 12. So if you picked up what we're doing here, we're setting a to this label and setting b to that label. So what we're going to do is a label dot text equals a dot to string. Because a is an integer, we have to convert it to a string before we can set that to the text of the label. So just do that. And then blabel.text equals b.toString. So now if we press start, you'll see if I press start, it'll put random numbers for each value. So actually, you should do plus one on both so you don't get zero. Because I, I don't think zero needs to be here. So now. It'll give me a number from 1 to 13 because it's adding 1. I believe it might just go up to 12. Um, once we've done that, we need to change some buttons. So we need to make it so this button becomes disabled and the done button becomes enabled. So what I'm going to do is the start button dot enabled equals false and the done button dot enabled equals true. So if I press start, um, the game starts, and I have to type in a number. Right now, nothing happens if I press done, but yeah. And so that's done. Now let's work on the timer. So time left is up here. What we're going to do is double-click on this part of the form, just the empty part, and then type in timer1.stop so the timer doesn't start by itself. And timer one dot enabled equals true. Let's set this first. So it enables the timer and it stops it just to make sure it doesn't start before we press the button. And so when we press the start button, we want to do timer one dot start. This starts the timer, but we're going to come back here and then we're going to click on the timer. We want to change the interval to 1000 milliseconds, so that's one second. So that way, the game will tick in seconds. So once we started it, we want to come back here and double click on the timer. And then this method will fire every time the timer ticks, so every second. And what we're going to do here is time label dot text equals um, time left. And we're also going to do time left minus minus. So now the time is going to go down by one second every time it ticks. Now we're getting an error because we have to convert this to a string. So now if we press start, 2, 1, 0. It subtracts 1, so I would make this 4 seconds. So if I press start, 3, 2, 1, 0. Nothing happens yet, and it's going to keep going, so we have to fix that too. We have to make sure if time left is greater than zero, run this code. So we're going to surround them with the curly braces, mm -hmm. and so now it will only go down to zero. Three, two, one, zero, and it stays. Okay, so what we're going to do is work on the done button. So when we press done, we want it so the done button becomes disabled, so you can't press it twice, and the start button becomes enabled. So we're going to press start, done, 
Now nothing happens yet, so we have to do that. What we're going to do is when you press done, we want to stop the timer so it stops ticking. And we also have to come back up here to the timer. And while it's ticking, if time left is equal to zero, so if the user runs out of time, we want to disable the done button and then enable the start button and we should do timer dot stop or not timer we don't want to stop the timer here anyways um, so we're just gonna end the game if you're out of time and just do timer one dot stop that's it and we can also do Lab or timer label dot text equals nothing. So the timer will go away. So back into the done button. Um, it stops the timer, and then we're gonna check if the uh, user is correct. So we're gonna come back up here, and actually we're gonna come up here. We're gonna get rid of the declaration of these variables here because we need to declare them up here so public int a and public int b so now these will, these variables up here will equal to the random numbers rather than it only being in this method so we come back down here and what we're going to do is int c equals a plus b so C is going to be the correct answer. We're going to check if answer box dot text is equal to C dot two string. So if the user typed in the right answer, oh yeah, double equal sign. If the user typed in the right answer, we need to timer one dot stop. So stop the timer. We need to. Mm -hmm change we can just change the timers text we can do timer label that text equals you win and then if the user is wrong you lose so let's see what we have so far start it hopefully there are no errors all right start Okay, so it's counting down. Looks like that part works and it restarts. Let's do it again. And now let's type in the answer. Yes, we need to change that. But I believe we got that right. So I'm going to move this over here. Again, the design's up to you. This is just to show that it works. So if I do this, it's counting down. And it goes away, which is what we want. But what we actually need to do real quick is make it so the text of this is actually nothing. So there's no timer. Then when we press start, if you type in the answer, you win. So it works. Let's try again. Um, the text stays for a second, but that's okay. So let's put the wrong answer. I ran out of time. So let's do it again. Let's put the wrong answer. Let's put seven. You lose. See, it's working now. Let's do it again. Let's put the right answer. Thir whoops, 13. You win. And we should make it so right when you click the start button the text becomes whatever the time left is so we can do start button dot text equals time left just so it looks better dot yep right because this that's an integer so we have to convert it to a string if you press start now start five you win and uh, that's yeah we're not supposed to set the start buttons text we're supposed to start set the uh, timer the timer label text my mistake but now if we press start and put 10 you win but if we start again it goes back to the timer so program is done that's how you make a random math game in C sharp um, you can see that if we put the wrong answer in, it doesn't work, and it gives you random numbers every time, and it works. So, 
you can download this entire project from the description if you'd like. But thank you for watching and have a great day.